Without a doubt, the number one thing I've gone better at over the past year is... Is making a mess. Gee whiz. In between the ages of 21 and 22, I made the conscious decision to switch from not really caring about clothes at all to now spending even more money than I did before. But also aside from the financial investment and investing a lot more energy into my wardrobe and style. And I've really been enjoying starting this fashion journey of it everyone else started about 10 years ago. <laughs> but with progress, there always comes this moment where you look back and go, oh, I, j I wish I knew this earlier. And in fact, I can think of three major things I wish I just had understood a lot earlier and I could have saved a bit of time, money, and just disappointments in the mirror. <laughs> but here's that list in the hopes of reaching someone who was in my position this time a year ago, effectively. <sighs> I hate doing this. I was wrong. A lot of people who know me well can vouch that I was a huge hater of baggy pants just for a long time. I was, I was, I was blind, but now I see. <laughs> I was aware of the pendulum that swings between skinny and baggy pants and mainstream fashion, how it kind of just like alternates in between the years. And living in Wellington for a few years, like you do see some pretty crazy pairs of pants and also it's windy all the time. So they're flapping. So they just look extra ridiculous. And I was just in that bag of straight leg pants, and skinny pants are just more practical. Why would you want more fabric? It seems unnecessary. L it literally took me buying one pair of pants that weren't straight leg or slightly skinny for me to go, oh, not only are these quite comfortable, I quite like how these look. <laughs> like it's a little embarrassing how fast my mind changed. <laughs> so I started to expand the collection. And then all of a sudden I started getting, hey man, I quite like your pants. They look good on you. Thanks bro. Never had got that before. <laughs> but who would have thought that after I reined back my judgmental behavior and just became a bit more open-minded to experimentation, I started having more fun. Oh my god, who would have thought? But genuinely, now just having like a full range of different pants that look drastically different to each other, not just like black pants, dark blue pants, grey pants. <laughs> it, it makes all of us so much more fun. And also, they just are comfier. People have been saying that. I didn't listen. They were right. I hate that. I hate that they were so right. <laughs> One pair that I got that I'm pretty stoked with. I saw all this hype around the Carhartt work pants and like the same baggy Carhartt pants. And that new pairs were crazy expensive and getting thrifted pairs was really hard. But I was in Wellington, which is effectively the thrifting capital of the country, which I barely took advantage of, I'll be honest. And in my last couple weeks before moving, I went with my best mate Jack, who is very good at thrifting in Wellington, and walked into the Salvation Army in Newtown, and off the rip, immediately, Carhartt pants. 20 bucks. They are like slightly too big, I'm not gonna lie. If Adam two years ago saw me wearing them, he would be so disappointed, but they just kinda rock. I still don't really know how to use them to their full potential, but I've got them, and I got them for a buck. So you know, that's half the game right there. <laughs> Something I touched on in my other clothes video was my very strong affinity for the color blue. It's been my favorite color for the majority of my life. And alongside a healthy mix of social conditioning that boys should like the color blue, it's also the safe spot in my color blindness. I'm red green colorblind, so the red and green cones of my eyes are affected, but my blue one should, in theory, work fine. So I've always felt very safe with blue. And I had it in my mind that as I developed my personal style that blue was just gonna be my color, which is convenient because I own a lot of blue clothes. But as I learnt more and progressed further into this medium, I had the painful realization that blue is kind of hard to wear. <laughs> I mean, to a point, obviously blue jeans go with a lot of different things. And, and there's plenty of outfits I've got that incorporate lots of blue, but I feel like I do look good at. But as a brunette man with brown hazel eyes and fair skin, I'm realizing like it just wasn't, it just isn't really meant for me. <laughs> My peak outfits are just very likely going to be earth tone based. A spectrum of shades of red and green. Oh, it's my worst nightmare. <laughs> but although I'm flying blind a little bit, I am feeling like earth tones just suit me a whole lot better. It's not that you can't ever wear bright colors, you just have to respect what bright colors do to an outfit and the energy around you. It sounds painfully obvious, but just accepting that wearing bright colors is going to draw more attention than wearing neutral colors was a was, was a mental checkbox I just hadn't ticked, you know? I feel like I was almost abusing color for a lot of my years of not knowing anything. And for a mixture of just color blindness and ignorance, I just didn't really understand how ridiculous I looked. <laughs> <laughs> it's also been mentioned to me a couple times that I've got a somewhat youthful appearance. And although I'm not overly bothered by that, if I ever do want to dress more mature, I now know that I'm not going to be doing that with a bright baby blue. Which again, sounds obvious. But man, even my colorblind glasses can't get me out of the funks I've got with this. I mean, this brown corduroy jacket, I believe it's brown. 
but this is exactly the same color. Is this even brown? But, but to my naked eye, this looks exactly the same as my apparently green cargo pants. So maybe I just get blue contacts or something, because it'll just make my life so much easier. <laughs> I can just see that my ring light is not plugged in properly. Hopefully we don't start a fire. Okay, one of the biggest things I wish I understood earlier to help speed run some of this process is that you can't really speed run the process. <laughs> but more specifically, you can't just buy a good wardrobe immediately. But it's a trap that I definitely fell into, and I think a lot of people who, you know, start caring about this stuff later than everyone else and tries to catch up falls into where they just go like, oh, I'm just gonna buy everything that everyone else has and just, you know get my toolbox effectively. And apart from it just being outrageously expensive, it just isn't gonna work the way you think it's going to. Because I really feel like a lot of things that make someone feel fashionable or appear fashionable are, are things and techniques that you can only figure out how to work on your body over time. Which will sound painfully obvious to anyone who's been doing this, but to, to an idiot like me, I have to hear that. Although I do feel like I've gotten better at dressing myself, that's such a crazy thing for an adult to say. <laughs> I'm 22. <laughs> oh, but although I feel like I've gone better at it over the past year, I still know that in a year, I'm gonna look back at what I'm wearing now and be like, oh my God, what were you doing? You don't know anything, brother. <laughs> and it's not really the point to have it perfect now. It's just to be like, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm wearing. Do you rock of it or not? Am I making sense? I hope I'm making sense. You can't buy yourself a good style. And even when you do see people with unlimited budgets do it, like you see a celebrity hire stylist. I don't know about you, but it just never looks quite right. It looks good, but it doesn't look authentic. I'm scared to use examples because I don't want to incur the wrath of any fan bases. But I always feel like you can really tell when a celebrity or public figure or someone, you know, in the public eye, really does care about their fashion versus someone that has a stylist. Because it's, the stylist ones are almost like they're too perfect in a way. Versus you can tell with like someone who's genuinely passionate that they're, you see like a lot of their personality bleed out and that might not be perfect, but it still looks better and tells me more about them and is more in the spirit of the art than just the person who got given a list of curated clothes that look great on them. Not saying that I couldn't use a stylist. I'm not saying like, I'm not really trying to hate on that. I'm just saying in the long term, grand scheme of what I'm trying to build in my own taste, I can't just buy myself out of having bad style. That being said, there have been a few purchases I've made that have just directly increased how much fun I have dressing up. That sounds so weird. There's probably a better way to say that. Obviously, I already covered all the baggy pants I've got, or baggier pants I got. Those definitely helped me take a big step in broadening my looks that I was going for. I also got my first ever, these have a rude name, but I'm gonna say tank top, but you know the other one I'm talking about, which I can't believe I went so long without one, but it's just the superior undershirt. It's just, it's so much more comfortable and cooler, especially in like hotter, hotter climates. I think I'm gonna have to get about four more of these because I can't, I've just got one, and it's, I know it's gonna get problematic. While we're talking about things I'm wearing, I also got a new chain. This is just a, a, a tennis chain, not real diamonds, I'm sorry. It's definitely way more neutral than the other chain I had. I just feel like it goes with a lot more stuff. I also got these on Roger advantages. I knew I needed like a white low top sneaker. I was debating, you know, like an Air Force One, a Stan Smith, or, you know, there's a lot of other options going around. And it's kind of hard to go wrong. But apart from being a Roger Federer fan, I quite like how these look. And I feel like they can be dressed up and down a lot more easier than say an Air Force One. I feel like I could wear these to a nice dinner and people wouldn't freak out as much versus if I had a big old Nike tick on my foot. I also think that On's just gonna grow as a brand over the next few years. And I wanna be in early. Also, if you're wondering if Cloud Tech is actually that comfortable and it's like worth the hype, I would say so. I would say yes. Also purchased my first ever cardigan. Big fan, very comfy. There's also just been some random clothes I've gone that got way more compliments I was expecting. Like, oh, I quite like this black crew neck. I'm like, thanks. I don't think it was that special, but I'm glad you like it. But to bring all this rambling to a close, to a clothes, <laughs> it really is about the journey, which is such an unsatisfying answer. There's no real point rushing through all this and trying to buy my way to the end because there isn't really an end. Like, what is the end? Me, me having it all together? It's like, there's gonna be a point I stop learning? Probably not. And it is freaky to now have a level of caring about this because it means people can now insult me about it and I'm gonna care. <laughs> but overall, I'm having fun and that's what matters. I hope I said something in this video that inspired you to have somehow more fun with your wardrobe. It's really just about experimentation in it. <laughs> or at least convince someone who was like me a year ago just to buy some baggy pants. <laughs> Anyways, thank you for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed it and you haven't hit the subscribe button, I would advocate that you do because I'm gonna make another one of these and I'm only gonna get better. Otherwise, I hope you're staying hydrated, hope you're staying happy. I'll catch you later, bye.